Good afternoon. It's Wednesday, January 20th. I'm Arya O'Sullivan, and this is IBA News, broadcasting from Jerusalem. Hezbollah's Unit 133 abroad is trying to deepen its involvement in Palestinian terror attacks against Israelis by recruiting West Bank terrorists to perpetrate shootings and suicide bombings. The Shin Bet Security Agency revealed today that it arrested a cell based in Tulkarim, whose members received their directives from Shia Islamist terrorist organization in Lebanon. IBA's Margot Dutkevich reports. Shin Bet operatives, the army and police, arrested five Palestinian members of a West Bank terror cell in Tulkarim who received directives and funds from Hezbollah. Jawad Nasrallah, the son of Hezbollah leader Hassan Nasrallah, together with a Hezbollah operative named Fadi, contacted cell members via social media networks and transferred $5,000 to fund their activities and purchase weapons and materials needed to perpetrate attacks. Details released by the Shin Bet today said the cell was headed by 32-year-old Mahmoud Jalul. They planned to perpetrate shooting and bomb attacks. Nasrallah instructed Jalul to set up an email account so he could send orders to recruit members, compile intelligence and possible targets for the attacks. He instructed cell members to use explosive belts and recruit suicide bombers. According to the Shin Bet, Hezbollah is trying to ride the current wave of terror and is working diligently to fan the flames. Margot Dutkevich, IBA News. The homes of two terrorists responsible for the stabbing attacks at Otniel and Tikor are set to be demolished. Today, military officials began to map the Beit Amamra, home of the 15-year-old Murad Badr Adayas, who murdered Otniel resident and mother of six, Daphne Meir, on Sunday night. The village is located several kilometers from Otniel. The home of Mohammed Shahlan, the 15-year-old Palestinian from Bethlehem who stabbed Michal Froman in Tekoa on Monday, is also being scrutinized. Shahlan was shot and wounded by uh, Israeli civilians when he attempted to flee. Meanwhile, the army today allowed the entrance of Palestinian laborers to the several West Bank settlements. The condition of Michal Froman, the pregnant woman who was stabbed in Tekoa on Monday, is improving and she remains hospitalized at the Hadassah Medical Center. Earlier today, I spoke with Michal's mother-in-law, the Hadassah Froman, a known supporter of coexistence and the widow of late peace activist Rabbi Menachem Froman. How is Michal, your daughter? She's better. She's getting better. She has to rest. She's a bit shocked about, uh, <laughs> you know, she believes in peace and suddenly a person come, look into the uh, eyes and say, want to kill her. And she, she came and asked him, uh, what's the problem? Can I help you? And he t took his knife and started to kill her. So she's a little bit shocked. She has to understand. It's, uh, it sharpened, the, you know, our duty to find a way how to stop this killing and uh, make a better situation, a better uh, life for the, our, our uh, neighbors mm -hmm. so they can uh, uh, look for a better uh, future. I have a lot of connections with the people all around and we have uh, a place of meeting and, uh, you know, trying to understand and uh, trying to to really know the problems and help people. You talk about the most of the Palestinians want to make peace. Uh, what about the terrorist families? What should be done with them? Should they destroy their houses? What should be done? From my point of view and what I hear from these people, it's not enough. Because they, uh, every terrorist get a lot of money from uh, uh, Hamas and uh, it's a kind of way to give uh, the families the uh, support. So from my point of view, it has to be more clear and more strong. And uh, we have to... to uh, exile these families. What, what we have to exile these families in order to get understand that there is no way of killing each, each other. Police have arrested an Israeli minor suspected of vandalizing a Christian church in Jerusalem last week. 
The 16-year-old suspect was brought to court today for an extension of his remand. The Domitian Abbey, located on Mount Zion, just outside the Old City, was spray-painted with anti-Christian graffiti overnight Saturday. Slogans included death to Christians, enemies of Israel, and the revenge of the people of Israel is yet to come, were written next to a drawing of a dagger covered with blood. The incident was the latest in a series of hate crimes against Christians and churches in Israel over the past few years. The U.S. administration expressed support for the latest ruling by the European Union Foreign Affairs Council to label goods made in Israeli settlements, stressing that the move does not constitute a boycott. State Department spokesman John Kirby also came out against what he called illegitimate Israeli settlement activity. We uh, view Israeli settlement activity as illegitimate and counterproductive to the cause of peace. We remain deeply concerned about Israel's current policy on settlements, including construction, planning, and retroactive legalizations. The U.S. government has never defended or supported Israeli settlements because administrations from both parties have long recognized that settlement activity beyond the 1967 lines and efforts to change the facts on the ground undermine prospects for a two-state solution. We are no different. We do not view labeling the origin of products as being from the settlements a boycott of Israel. We also do not believe that labeling the origin of project products is equivalent to a boycott. At the same briefing, Washington also sprung to the defense of U.S. Ambassador to Israel Dan Shapiro, who earlier this week accused Israel of employing double standards with one law for Palestinians and the other for Israelis. Shapiro's comments were harshly criticized by Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, but the U.S. State Department insists that there's nothing new. Um, we've consistently made clear our concerns about violence on both sides, um, and we obviously have strongly condemned terrorist attacks perpetrated by Palestinians, uh, including the attacks over the weekend. Um, we also remain concerned, I'm deeply concerned, and we've not been bashful about saying this, and neither was he, uh, about Israeli settler violence against Palestinians and their property in the West Bank. In a move that's likely to draw additional harsh criticism from Europe and the United States, the government plans to declare over 1,500 dunams of agricultural land near the Palestinian city of Jericho state land. The property located north of the Israeli community of Almog has been worked by Jewish farmers for years, and there are no Palestinian villages near the site. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and Defense Minister Moshe Ya'alon have already ratified the plan, which is expected to be finalized in the coming weeks. According to a statement issued by the coordinator of government activities in the territories, final steps are underway to declare the land state-owned. It said the move, which is apparently aimed at expanding control of Jewish communities in the area, is awaiting final approval, after it already received the go-ahead from senior officials and experts. Meanwhile, political wrangling over government policies continues. Several ministers and MKs have come out strongly against remarks made yesterday by Education Minister Naftali Bennett, who criticized the country's security strategies. Speaking at the INSS conference, Bennett accused the government of being deadlocked in its thinking regarding ways to ensure its security. Bennett charged that Israel was being led by ongoing developments rather than taking the initiative. He said it's the government's philosophical thinking that poses the biggest threat to Israel's existence rather than the diplomatic stalemate with the Palestinians. Defense Minister Moshe Yalon responded to the comments. Speaking at the same security forum, Yalon called Bennett's remarks reckless and childish. Without referring to Bennett by name, Yalon blasted him for endangering national security for short-term political gain. He accused the Education Ministry of hypocrisy, supporting certain policies in the inner cabinet, and then publicly campaigning for different strategies. Prime Minister Netanyahu, accompanied by his wife Sarah, set off to Davos earlier today to take part in the annual World Economic Forum. The Prime Minister is slated to address the conference twice tomorrow. He also is scheduled to meet with a list of world leaders, diplomats and businessmen, including U.S. Vice President Joe Biden, Secretary of State John Kerry, and the Prime Ministers of Argentina and the Netherlands. Netanyahu will also hold talks with some of the world's top businessmen, including heads of Hewitt Packard, Uber and Kabursky Lab. He is set to return back home on Friday. In other diplomatic news, a top Brazilian official today reacted publicly for the first time to the appointment of former settlement leader Danny Dayan as the next Israeli ambassador to his country. In an interview with the local news agency Marco Ariello Garcia, a top foreign policy advisor to Brazil's president Dilma Rousseff, said that appointing Dayan was a big mistake. He emphasized that Dayan's past as the head of the Yesha Council and his opposition to a Palestinian state made him an inappropriate candidate. Garcia accused Jerusalem of violating diplomatic protocol by announcing the Dayan nomination before informing Brasilia. 
Dana Dayan, a native of Argentina who currently lives in the West Bank settlement of Malé Chomron, was appointed by the cabinet over four months ago to serve in the top diplomatic position. Last week, Prime Minister Netanyahu said he had no intention of retracting the appointment. Police in the Southern Command have arrested 12 suspects who they believe swindled money from elderly Russian immigrants to the tune of one million shekels. The eight-month-long police investigation spread outside Israel's border to Lithuania, where two of the ringleaders in the fraud scam were arrested. The suspects contacted elderly Russians, fabricating a story that one of their relatives was involved in a car accident, and if they wanted the situation handled without involving police, they needed to pay up for the service. Some of the suspects posed as lawyers. Couriers were sent to the immigrants' homes to collect the money, which was transferred to Lithuania. In financial news, shares were down across the board on the Tel Aviv Stock Exchange, while the shekel was mixed in foreign currency trading. Here are the late afternoon numbers. Well, today the Mount Hermon Ski Resort was open to the public and authorities said the Sea of Galilee has risen three centimeters in the past 24 hours. And the forecast calls for a partly cloudy skies tomorrow and it will be a little bit warmer. Here's a look at the lows and the highs at home and abroad for the next 24 hours. Well, that brings us to the end of this edition of IBA News. I'm Aria O'Sullivan, wishing you a good evening, and we are leaving you with images of the country's legislators who, celebrating the Knesset's 67th birthday yesterday, took some time off their parliamentary duties to display their other talents. Some sang, played the guitar and the piano, held karate demonstrations, and even cooked jam. I don't know, maybe they shouldn't quit their day jobs. You be the judge. I see.